help you open your hearts to anything in your life that might need kindness or forgiveness, including yourself. Our opening words this morning are a responsive reading by Amanda Udis Kessler. I will read the plain text, and you please read the italics. It may be the hardest thing we will ever do. God. The one who offended may not deserve forgiveness. Why then should we forgive? Because we all miss the mark. Because restoring even one relationship heals many hearts. Because drawing closer to another builds our communities. Because the world we seek to create is a world filled with forgiveness. It may be the hardest thing we will ever do. And so I want to welcome you with Live from Fellowship Hall. It's our LCU UF Sunday service. Our announcements were on a slideshow before the uh, service, and they are in the weekly newsletter that was in your email yesterday. If you are new and would like to receive emails uh, with the ne- and the weekly newsletter in the weekly newsletter, please talk to a member of the welcome team at the welcome table outside. And now a special welcome to our visitors. If you are visiting with us for the first time or have returned and connected with us after a long absence, we invite you to say your name and tell us where you're from. If you're on Zoom, use the Zoom raise hand feature, just raise your hand and we'll ask you to unmute. If you are in the room, just raise your hand. Anybody new here today? No newbies. All right. Uh, is there anyone new with us on Zoom? No, no one new on Zoom. Okay. There, everybody's repeating. That's a good thing. All right, just <laughs> just a brief note. We offer a wide, wide variety of services on various topics presented by our members, outside guests, and our minister, Reverend Matt Alspaugh. We hope that you will return to sample this variety of thought and belief. Good morning. Oh, I think I better lower this. I think it might help. I think so. Now we light our chalice with these words. Your mouth really close to the microphone. Uh, what? Your mouth should be close to the microphone. Uh, okay. All right. Got it. Uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. All this light in celebration. For the life that we share. I'm fine. Oh, thank you. Each week, we take time to remind ourselves that we belong to a community which cares for each other. The sharing of joys, sorrows, and milestones is one way that we practice holding one another in community. We speak what is in our hearts. Sharing any significant joys or sorrows in our lives because there is power in sharing. We will start with the folks in the room. Oh. 
we'll share our joys first. Hello? I think it might be on. Try it. I don't need a mic, but since it's here, I'll use it. Um, I'm a mother of three rescued dogs, and my friend Chris Philipson, a lot of you know her from uh, Anavets and different places, just flew 12 dogs to Montreal to new homes. Mexican street dogs. Any more joys? husband's son and family are coming next Saturday and we're going to bring them on Sunday and we're very excited about it. Thank you. Are there any joys on Zoom? Yes. This is Trudy and I have a joy that our friend Billy Heim got a good biopsy result. Billy's been bit, uh, treated for cancer for, and suffering for quite a while, and it's a real relief. Anyone else? That's it from Zoom. Now let us voice our sorrows. Whatever you or the world may be holding that is in need of our healing and caring thoughts. My name is Sue. Uh, I would like to light a candle for my sister-in-law who is back in the hospital with a stomach bleed. Hopefully this time they will find out what it is and get it stopped. You'll remember she has stage four pancreatic cancer. Hi, my name is Susie, and I would like to light a candle for my sister, Lori, who has been diagnosed with lymphoma and is waiting for biopsies on stomach mass, too. So she's got a week to wait, and prayers for peace for her and her family. Oh, I'm so sorry. Anyone else? Now, are there any sorrows to be shared on Zoom? Yes, we have several. I don't know why there's an echo, by the way. Um, first, from Doug Mattoon, uh, a concern for Penny and Lamar, who are both suffering from health issues. And then I got an email from uh, John DeWall just a few minutes ago saying that he had suffered a seizure and was in, I think he meant to say San Antonio Hospital. I saw Diane yesterday and so I am assuming that this is something that has happened since yesterday afternoon. And then from myself, from Trudy, I have a concern for Julian Dunlop, who is with his son in the ICU in London. His son is on life support. Ooh. Are there any more? That's all we have from Zoom. Oh, oh there is one more over here, please. <laughs> About, we like joys. I'm a little confused. My joy is that my husband has survived the, the seizure, um, oh. the viruses, the oxygen, and everything. And he has turned the corner, and he's doing really well. <laughs> John, that's great. Now, this candle is from our care team. It represents the joys and the sorrows we hold in the silent sanctuary of our hearts. We light this candle for all those 
unspoken sorrows and joys. Let us share a moment of silence to hold in our hearts both the sorrows and the joys that have been shared this morning. Our first hymn this morning, We Forgive Ourselves and Each Other, is not so much a hymn as a reminder of what to do when we are angry or frustrated. You do not have to stand up. You can just sit and quietly enjoy the music. Now we will have a story. I can't believe I'm not the shortest person here. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh boy. Come on. It's not. Okay. I'm going to hold it. All right. Now we'll have a story. Two monks, one senior, one junior, were walking through a town on a muddy road. In the middle of the road was a cart with a luxuriously dressed woman standing in it. She had a haughty manner and tapped her foot impatiently, looking around and glancing at the sidewalk. The senior monk went to her and offered to carry her across the mud. She nodded imperiously, and he took her on his shoulders, carried her across the mud, and placed her gently on the sidewalk. Without a word of thanks or a glance in his direction, she walked away. As they continued their journey, the younger monk was speechless, and two hours passed without a word between them. Finally, the younger monk could not contain himself any longer and blurted out, that woman was very rude. She should have thanked you. The older monk looked at him and replied, brother, I set her down two hours ago. Why are you still carrying her? <laughs> what does this story say to you about holding on to past hurts? Are you bound by your thoughts? to someone who injured you? I'm not going there. <laughs> Good luck. OK, I'll <laughs> wrestle with this. <laughs> Now we will have a meditation. Let's try that. Now we will have a meditation to ground us in the present moment. Thank you. Let me start again. Now we will have a meditation to ground us in the present moment. Take a moment to be comfortable in your chairs and close your eyes. Soften your gaze. Begin by focusing your attention on your breath. In breath, out. In breath, out. 
Your breath happens all the time without your noticing. But now, today, we notice. Let go of your thoughts. If a thought arises, let it go. If it is important, it will return. We will spend one minute focusing on the breath. Now, Now we will explore our senses. First, sight. If your eyes are closed, open them and look softly. What can you see without moving your head? Just look. Absorb the objects, colors, light, and textures. If a thought arises, gently bring your attention back to what you can see. Now focus on what you can hear. How many different sounds can you hear? You can identify each and then move on to the next. Next is touch. Feel how the chair and the earth hold your body. Feel your body. First, outside. Feel your clothes touching you. Do you feel a breeze? Do you feel warm or cool? Now, inside your body, are you comfortable, uncomfortable, in pain? Simply feel. Now smell. What can you smell? Maybe it's nothing but the air from outside. Does it have a smell? No taste. Can you taste anything? Feel the inside of your mouth and your tongue. Now come back to the room. We will sing our reminder again. We will sing the line twice, and there is no need to rise.
we forgive ourselves and each other for the times when we have been less than kind or have injured others with our behavior because of our fear, anger, greed, or selfishness. There are many ways to be of service to the LCUUF. Our time, treasure, and our talents. These are all necessary components to a healthy fellowship. Now is the time in our service when we ask you to share the gift of treasure through pledging and donations. Instructions for payments to the fellowship are on a, slide, on a slide during the announcements before the service each week. For the people here at the fellowship will pass a basket. If you are new here today, and you are struggling to hold things together, let the basket pass you by. Your presence is more than enough and is a gift for all of us. And while you are considering the gifts to the fellowship, remember that each month, LCUUF donates 5,000 pesos or more to an organization in our Lakeside community. We share one half of the offering collected at the fellowship each week with that organization. For the month of May, we have supported uh, Tapeoa Centro Comunitario. The Tepeoa neighborhood is situated on the hillside above the downtown Chapala. It is considered one of the poorest neighborhoods in the state of Jalisco. Their vision is to help a, a village to help itself, to create a place the poor of the village can go to for food and counseling, guidance and help of any kind the offering will now be given and received. Now, we're going to do something a little different. No service. We will make and take eight minutes to sit in silence. This is probably longer than many of you ever have taken to simply sit, so it might be difficult. I encourage you to tell us how it felt later so we will know more about the silence of, his, of this length during our services. This is not a meditation. We will simply sit and allow our thoughts to come up. Follow the Quaker tradition if you feel moved to share that, share what you discover within yourself during this time. You're welcome to stand and speak to the group. If you wish to briefly speak, stand up and we will bring you a microphone. Otherwise, we will sit for reflection for the next eight minutes.
Let's come back to the room. Our time of silence is over. We will now sing our closing hymn. I've got peace like a river. Let's have a rousing rendition of this. Please rise as you're willing and able and join us in singing. Good singing. For our closing words today, please join me in the spirit of prayer. Spirit of life, that which surrounds us, upholds us, and flows through us. Bring me peace. Bring me also the ability to calm myself and refrain from angry speech when I am hurt, angry, fearful, resentful, or frustrated. Bring me peace of spirit enough that I can forgive myself for all the hurtful things I have thought and said about myself. Peace of spirit enough to remember that I cannot know what has happened to others in the past and to forgive them for the mistakes they make because they are human. Peace of spirit enough that I can forgive myself because the, for the mistakes I make because I too am human. Let me also remember to take time for reflection 
and to give some space between thought and action or speech so that I do not make too many mistakes through thoughtlessness. May it be so. Amen. Now, let us extinguish our chalices with these words which we read together. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we keep in our hearts and share with all the world. For our postlude, Michael will play a hymn, Amazing Grace. The words will be on the screen, and you do not need to rise, but sing along if you're inclined. Our worship is over. Our service begins. Go in peace and with a purpose. <laughs>